Greetings, dear ones. I'm Cryon of Magnetic Service. Tonight, I want to give you a story. It's a love story. It also happens to encompass the history of the planet, but now, the future, things I want to tell you, things I want to qualify. Let's call it the state of the earth in June 2017. It's a love story because of where it begins, how it starts. If you go back 14 years, the channelings of crying began in book one. And I've told you some of the things that it said. But basically, it was an introduction to the shift that I and so many others who you would call the angelic realm or whatever the voices from the central source began giving you information about something that the ancestors and the ancients all knew they had been watching the stars and the skies for thousands of years they realized that the sky changed subtly from decade to decade to decade to decade. They started to understand the mechanics of the solar system. Way before modern telescopes, they had figured out that the Earth goes around the sun, that the Earth had a wobble, and even the duration of it. And through time, a prophecy developed that was so similar between the ancients that even today, you were amazed when you compare them, but they didn't know each other. The calendars began, the long count, the talk about consciousness shift, all of this. And in 1989, my partner started speaking for me. Two years after the harmonic convergence, a statement that said the shift may occur. Something is happening. And in 1993, I gave you the information. Why we were here, what was going on, what would happen. Some of the prophecies, a cryptic book, a small one, where my partner was just learning how. And you might say, how to do what? And the answer you got today, is it possible there could be a coherence with the central source? And the answer is yes. It explains channeling. Enhanced intuition, the bridge to the other side of the veil, the feeling of complete love. And in this first book, I gave you information about the magnetics of the planet and more. Some would say it was cryptic, it was only a few sentences, but I gave you the information of the weather shift. My partner interpreted it in this way. He said that there would be times and places where it always rained when it never would be and places where it never rained when suddenly there would be. In other words, massive climate change. And that was in 1993. This is the precursor for what you are now experiencing on the planet. This is a love story, dear ones. And the story is the love of God the love of the central source, the love of all that is Gaia itself for the human being. It's all about you, dear ones. The old souls on the planet are here on purpose at this time 
There is no mistake. You're in the seat at this time. Some of you are just learning about these things. Some of you are very aware of these things. Each of you has your own path. Each of you has your own decision of what to believe and not believe. I'm just here to tell you a tremendous love story. That there was a shift coming. And that the earth itself was preparing for it for you. Posturing a way that you can advance yourself. Learn about the coherence with the planet, with your own selves. Talking about a time when humanity would start to come out of the old energy, which you call human nature. It never shifted, it never changed, and now it was going to. The prophecies were not about time as much as they were about consciousness, shift, and change. Whether it was the Mayan calendar or the Hopi prophecy rock, they were the same. They talked about different paths you could take, but a split that was dark and light. In their own ways, they spoke of a, a planet that was so in transition that if you hadn't destroyed yourselves by that magic precession of the equinox center, that something would begin. An evolution of, of, of humanity in a way you'd never seen before, and it would start with consciousness. And all that went with it. And you had to have an earth that was prepared for it. The magnetic grid would shift, the weather would change. So let's talk about the weather. For many years, I have spoken up on what is happening with your weather. And it was controversial from the beginning. Six to seven years, maybe more. When you began seeing that which was called the warming. And I said, it isn't going to be a warming, it's a cooling. You could track that back, for I wanted to set the record state straight before others would come in and build another doom scenario, which is very common for humanity. I want to make a statement, and it's going to be repeated. That the doom scenario of humanity is so ingrained in you, it's a habit. And whenever you see something unusual, the first thing you think of is doom. You were trained to think that way. From history, from scripture, from your parents, from all those who would join in in conspiracy theories that would come to a horrible end and seeming to enjoy themselves while they did it. The doom scenario, dear ones, is a habit. You're still not through it. This is a love story. I want to tell you about the weather. You want to track what's happening? It's solar activity. Always was. You can see the cycles of weather on the planet from the cycles of the solar activity as recorded in history. They correlate. It's not an accident. It's not a mistake that a cycle is coming. And we told you it would be 14 years ago. The cycle comes whether there are humans here or not. Should we say that again? The cycle comes whether there are humans here or not. Let the record show that the cycle is very consistent. Starts with warming. High carbon dioxide levels. Goes into a place eventually of cooling. And the cycle was complete over and over and seen. This, we told you, would be a mini ice age. People say, well, when? Why don't you look at the cycle? The timing is there. I'll tell you. You will be into the 
cold portion within 15 years. Some of you are still enjoying the warming section of it. That will slowly start to move. It has to come before the cooling. A mini ice age? Is that doom for the planet? Have you seen the artists for picture, uh, uh, pictures of what they draw about, about what that's going to be like with, with, with New York under ice and all of the other things that go very well with science fiction movies? If you want to know what it's like, just flash back in history and read what took place in about 1650. That was a mini ice age. The River Thames froze. It's cold. And it did not doom the planet. That's a mini ice age. That's what you're facing. And I'll say it again. If you live in a cold climate, heed this advice. It's going to get colder. Get off the grid. Heed the advice. Get off the grid. Within the next 15 years, find a way of producing electricity and all that you need independently in neighborhoods or homes because you're going to need it. Dear ones, the grid as it exists right now all over the world is not prepared for this and will fail. That's not doom and gloom. That's just practical. That's just telling you something you already sense Prepare for a cold spell. That's all it is. I want to give you a love story. Why does Gaia do this? What's the purpose of these kinds of things? I'll give it to you one more time. It's controversial. It's unbelievable. How many of you have fish tanks? Those listening, how many would have fish tanks? I'll tell you something you already know. You can do whatever you need to do to the water. You can change the pH levels. You can change the temperatures. You can aerate. But there comes a time when you got to change the water. This is what the temperature changes are about. This is controversial. Watch for evidence as this occurs and remember this channel. The cycle is to refresh the life in the ocean so that everyone will have food. It does it by itself. It does it for a reason so it will not stagnate. Oh yes. Dear ones, you put things into the air and you put things into the water, but it has not caused this cycle. We have said for a very long time, stop killing the environment because it's going to kill you, not Gaia. Not Gaia. Gaia will survive anything you do. You may not if you continue polluting. That is starting to change for you're starting to see this. You're starting to move with it. But that's not causing the shift. The reefs that are dying, that's not all you, dear ones. That is a cycle. It's almost like a reboot for the oceans. And you're going to see reports of this and this. But at the same time, you're going to see unusual reports of too many fish. Too much of this unusual this you're going to see the life cycle of the ocean itself start to change and reboot I want you do not misinterpret this I want you to watch for magic in Antarctica it has always been the core of the refreshing of microbes and other kinds of life in this ocean and is especially active during the many ice ages they refresh the life in the ocean. They refresh the life in the ocean. And how does that affect humanity in this love story? How does that work exactly? It means that you 
will have enough to eat. For the ocean is the giver of life. Food for the planet, part of the life cycle of Gaia itself. The earth must do this. It's all related to the solar activity and much more. The love story continues, does it not? And it had to refresh right after the shift. What is the shift? It is a renewal of absolute renewal of civilization as you know it. You passed the marker where destruction and termination was expected. You're overdue for a war. You know that. The sociologists are scratching their head. The scientists are. And then there's a team of people who are trying to tell you what is happening. The miracles that are before you. And what they're describing, dear ones, from my aspect, is the love story. The earth is being prepared so that you'll have enough food, so that you'll have a higher consciousness, so the ideas that are going to stump, that are starting to come to you, will be accepted, not rejected. So eventually, there'll come a time when you won't kill each other. I've said this before, dear ones, listen to me. The end of war on earth is not the end all, it's the beginning. For when there is no war, inventions will be given to you and physics which will be given to you and you will not weaponize it. And that's where it really begins. The way of feeding yourselves, the way of clothing yourselves, the way of, of having health for all. The end of suffering for the planet. The beginning of politics that makes sense governments that don't argue a coming together of a planet I've seen it I've seen it you haven't and so you take this information you walk outside and roll your eyes and say well maybe not maybe not socially right now it begins did you notice Nothing is going to remain the same. And when these changes begin, the reaction is fear. When you say the, the economy start to shift and change, or a new paradigm being presented that must be, must be done to, sal to, to, to save it, to have salvation of a, of a system, you're not going to like it. You want everything to be the same. And when it starts, there'll be those who stand up and say, yes, see, it's the doom of the planet. Here it comes. They're already doing it. You're five years into the shift. Mother, how long does it take to raise a child? <laughs> I'm hearing from the audience 40 years. That's not right. <laughs> Let's call it 20. And during that time, the love story is there. No matter what happens when they're three or when they're five or 11 or 17, the love story remains no matter whether they're kicking or screaming or calling you names, whether they're in frustration, whether they're going through self-worth issues, you're there. And you do your best because the love of a parent is unsurpassed. You are birthing a new energy, a new paradigm on the planet, and you are five years old. You're starting to gyrate. Is it really happening? Is this really a shift? Is it a change? Or is it the end of the world? This is human nature. Come back in time with me, thousands of years ago. Come back, come back. Pretend for a moment you're in a small group called the Israelites. And you are about ready to move out of Egypt. You have suffered years and years of horror 
as slaves. You don't live very long. And you knew it. Generation after generation. You don't live long. You don't live long. And then it happened. And with your own eyes, Israelite, you may have seen the miracles that took place one after another that changed the Pharaoh's mind. Right up to the one, the big one, the Passover. You got to see it with your own eyes. The plagues, the miracles, all of it. And then you were able to escape and you gathered your things and you moved as a civilization across the desert and you came across the Red Sea and you got across it and Pharaoh didn't follow you. That is the miracle of miracles. You were there, you were alone, you were free. You were free. You'd seen it with your own eyes. It went into your eyes, into your brain. You cognized it, you saw it. And then you started to go in the circle across the desert to the promised land. Here it comes, here it comes. The promised land is coming, is coming. It didn't come fast enough, did it? And within five years, you'd lost some seniors. You'd lost some wisdom. The guidance of the seniors were falling on deaf ears. You were a young person. You were starting to object. You didn't believe in the one God. You have ignored everything you'd seen. Here it comes. Do you recognize the pattern? I sat on a stage in Israel not long ago and told them something they didn't want to hear. I told them they were still walking in circles. That the promised land is the new Jerusalem. And when they got out of the paradigm and the box of the old energy of hatred and fear and war, an expectation of the same from the other side they would still always walk in circles until they had that I'm going to give you information right now dear ones the love of God is not going to terminate this planet when you're five it's free choice the procession of the equinoxes has a time as it proceeds through the stripe in the sky, which is the Milky Way, into and out of that magic area. 18 years in, 18 years out. 36 years combined. A nine. Completion. You're five years into an 18-year window where we have told you that this is the time when you can make the difference. Listen to what is being presented. Don't fear that which others tell you you should fear. A mini ice age is coming to cleanse the ocean and to feed this planet. And there are those who say it is doomed. And you're going to freeze to death. That's how much God loves you. Can you imagine going through all of this? Going through the shift. Having all of the information, all of the science start to come up to this kind of a fruition. Going through what you've gone through. Seeing what was predicted. Fighting the dark army. Looking at light and dark. Showing what's going to have to happen. All of these things you're getting ready for. And God's going to snuff you out. How does it sound so far? Dear ones, that is a fantasy. I want you to celebrate the love of God and the cycles that are here, the information that you've heard and understand. You're going to have to rewrite the doom and gloom. You had a movie the other night, science fiction film. I channeled before it. It's one of the first ones in years and years and years where the aliens who visited Earth were a lot like you in their consciousness and needed your help. They didn't come to destroy you. They didn't bring great weapons. They didn't come to steal your gold or your oceans. There is life in the universe, dear ones, that is far more advanced than you. I'm not talking about the fact that they have bigger brains. I'm talking about they have compassion and wisdom, intelligence, and they have settled their own peace problems years, years before you did. They look at you 
they have a hands-off policy because you have free choice. They've always looked at you. They come and they go. You've had civilizations before your own. I gave the channel in Turkey. History before history. There have been things that have occurred on this planet and beyond that is you. We told you that. We made historians angry as we would channel around the Sphinx, telling them that was not the age of the Sphinx. That it went back far, far, far beyond, beyond that. There are things you don't know yet, you don't realize, you don't recognize, but you will. And they'll all come together for you to realize that this is the pinnacle. You're about to experience more changes. We told you this morning that darkness smiles when you're fearful. It's up to you how much smiling goes on. We told you you cannot kill darkness. And the only way is to create more light. The more light there is, the less darkness we'll have on the planet. You are right now in the cusp of social discovery. Have you heard what has been presented on this stage? Those who are beginning to understand compassion, coherence, the meaning, purpose of the heart. It's starting. This is not the beginning of doom. I want you to remember that. When you leave this place and there will be those, both esoteric and not, on the news, and they'll always tell you the end is near. When my partner was born, the first thing he heard in church was the end is near. He's heard from others who continue to go to his church, the end is near. It's always near. The box you have is that which almost demands that you're afraid. We've asked you to disassemble, disassemble the box. Maybe it's time to create a new paradigm of belief and all the others are shattered before you. Old soul, you are the forerunners of everything here. The shift, you're the reason you're sitting in the room or listening to this channel. Old soul, take this seriously. And if somebody tells you it's the end of the world, I want you to smile and tell them why it's not. Tell them that God loves them too much for that. That that's a human story, not a sacred story. It's the greatest love story of all. How much God loves you. You've made it through the shift and you begin to climb a hill of change. Frightening it can be. Scary it can be. Difficult it will be. Who better? than one who has lived hundreds of lives and has the wisdom of the Akash. Who better than to take us as a planet through that? And that's you. That's the greatest story. That's the love story. Can you feel it? Can you feel perhaps the coherence today between me and you as I give you news that is good and that is fresh that is promising that is true you'll see go from this place differently than you came be circumspect when you talk to others so you won't frighten them with something that think they think is a belief instead it's a grand truth and they can see it in your eyes because you're balanced with it. That's the message of crime. Let it be so. And so it is.